Hi everyone, welcome to Fintech Academy. This is Harsh. Today I will go over and show you the difference between credit memo and refund receipt in QuickBooks Online. Yes, both of these topics, how do they work and which one to use when. Let's have a look in that. All right, so let's first understand the difference between the credit memo and refund receipt. A credit memo is a transaction that can be applied to a customer's invoice as a payment or reduction. Whereas a refund is a transaction that is used when reimbursing a customer's money. So that's the primary difference between the two, that credit memo, of course, when you are, for whatever reason, let's say if you are dealing with a customer for ongoing basis and a long time, maybe if something has gone wrong on one of the orders or one of the uh, materials or products or services, whatever you're offering, you might want to reimburse them as, as a part and you know uh, you want to apply that credit on the next invoice so that's where the credit memo can be used and can be uh, provided as a part of the customer gesture on the other hand a refund is you are reimbursing the customer back uh, maybe like a one-time customer or walk-in customer kind of situation and uh, you know you are either reimbursing the whole of the amount of money or or a por portion or the partial of that whatever it is but that will go and that's the time you can use the refund receipt further credit memos are used to offset an existing customer balance the customer returns the goods and you issue the refund and it gets applied to the open outstanding invoices so there could be an invoice which is uh, pending to be received and it can get offset against that there is no money changing hands. So basically, um credit memo gets applied to that invoice and that's it if the if the invoice is still having some funds then probably your customer is going to pay you but if that offsets against the invoice then there is no money that is changing between that uh, particular invoice and the credit memo on the other side for the refund receipt when a refund receipt is created quickbooks will debit that means it, it will lower the revenue tied to the items you are refunding so basically the revenue uh, of course in, uh, to the items that you are refunding will go down the system will also credit which is in this case the bank account or undeposited funds that is used for payment so whichever uh, mode by which you are going to send the money out uh, that is going to be credited it could be a bank account or if there's a credit card any of those ways whatever it is that's what will happen over here all right, guys, so that is a basic understanding of the credit memo and refund receipt. Now I'm going to show you hands on in QuickBooks Online that, you know, how we uh, can enter a credit memo and see the impact and thereafter we'll be doing a receipt, a refund receipt as well. All right, let's hop over to QuickBooks Online. All right, guys, so I'm right over here in QuickBooks Online and uh, let's have a look how we first take up the scenario of the credit memo, how we handle that situation. So I'm going to go to sales and I'm going to click on the customers over here and I have my this customer chairs which is showing some balance over here. So we can see that, you know, this customer has to pay an amount of 1,579 and change and there are these two invoices which are open. Let's say if we enter a credit memo, what will happen? Well, first of all, before we enter a credit memo, let's understand there is one setting in QuickBooks Online, which is important. And the reason why it is because I have two invoices. How will QuickBooks decide that the credit memo will be linked against which one? Right, guys. So basically, I'll go to the gear icon on the top right hand corner. And uh, in the portion of your company, I will be clicking on account and settings. Once I'm in account and settings on the left, the tab which I'm going to click on is advanced over here. And once I click on that, I'm going to go to this area, which is automation. Now, if we scroll in that automation, the second uh, option or the second line is automatically apply credits. 
most of the times you will see that this setting is on uh, by QuickBooks Online. It already does that for us. I'm going to click on this question mark to understand what it is. Automatically applies credits to the next invoice you credit for the same customer. So basically, it will be applied to the customer, the next invoice which is there. Now, most companies turn on this setting turn it off if if you are a property manager that requires security deposit so basically by default it is always turned on this setting now let's say in our scenario we have two uh, invoices as i showed before that we are open and if i want to pick it up by myself and allocate that credit memo to a specific invoice then a i can like turn off this setting over here and uh, i will get the option to do that and if i let this uh, setting be on then what's going to happen is that we have two of the invoices and it's going to go and sit with the first one so for now i'm going to let it be on let it be the way in which it is right and let's see what happens when we enter a credit memo we have 1004 and 1005 uh, fortunately the values of um, the invoice amount is similar for both of them so click on the plus on the top left that's what i'll do over here and i'll go to credit memo over here in the section of customers when I click on there um, straight away uh, it'll ask me the name of the customer I'm going to mention my customer name which is customer chair so we're here and I'm going to go to the product and service click on the small down arrow let's say I had done this combo package over there because this is a bundle item okay uh, supply and install as soon as I click on that it's going to show me exactly that same value and uh, two items are a combination of that and that is also shown over here um, it's basically Basically, these two are the inventory items and then I made a bundle that's what I have done over here okay if you want to know about this part then the, I have prepared a video tutorial which will explain how you can create these kind of items in QuickBooks Online all right for now we are on this credit memo number 1012 I'm gonna do save and close and let's see what happens with that as soon as I complete that now we can see that the balance has gone down to 789.87 ie only one of them is now open now the question is which one got linked because you know we had put that automatically feature turned on right apply credits feature on and as I was mentioning over there it's going to go and link with the first one that is 1004 so if I click on it now it's going to is showing that it's been paid why because the credit memo is linked to that when I click on that straight away it's going to take me and show that hey you know what this is the transaction which QuickBooks does for us automatically this is the invoice number which has been picked up against this credit memo 1012 which we just entered and that's how it has been offset now if you want to you and your customer decide that hey don't put it under against that but put it against the other one you certainly can make the change over here so guys this is how the credit memo can be helpful uh, we can see that yes um, in the credit memo what I did I also put in the inventory so of course the impact is going to be on the inventory as well um, when I did the invoicing uh, the inventory goes out the product gets sold so I have this category a type item so let's have a look what's going to happen or what it shows on that so what I can do is I can click on the neighboring tab which is products and services right over here okay and if uh, once I'm over here I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and I can see my category a chair over here um, the, the current stock is shown over here that's a quantity on hand but I'm gonna click on this in action there's a small little down arrow and I'm gonna click on the second line which is run report when I do that it's gonna show me exactly what's going on with this item there is bill there is in Invoice and there you go that is a credit memo so invoice will show minus one because the quantity is going out of course but credit memo gets the quantity in so I have that value over here where the quantity is plus over here so that's how the movement of the inventory happens when we use the credit memo everything gets updated even the customer balance as we saw that got updated and definitely yes further if you want to look at it right we can go to reports on the left 
and once I'm on the reports on the left, let's say if I click on the profit and loss, I will be able to see the impact over here as well. So if I click on the, you know, the total income over here, which is uh, showing as an example, right, 699, I can see that yes, there are two invoices that, but then there's a credit memo that has kicked in. So basically this is the, my service sales uh, on the top, which shows over here. And this is my product sales. So basically both the things got impacted. Yes, the, there was sales so the income did go up but then because of the credit memo kicking in it has gone back down so guys this is how the credit memo works complete uh, part on that and the impact that it shows right guys let's look at the second scenario which is about uh, uh, how to record the uh, refund receipt but before we go and look at that let's go and create an invoice okay so that you know we can put that scenario in and thereafter we'll see how the um, uh, refund receipt can work on that so first of all I'm gonna uh, create a customer over here so let's uh, type in the name of the customer as country chairs like this okay and I'm gonna click uh, add new straight away I have the option over here if I want to go for details but I'm gonna click on uh, save straight away okay so I have the country chairs as my name of the customer um, invoice let's say I'm gonna create this invoice on August the 9th over here and I'm gonna sell uh, the same bundle which is supply and install of these chairs automatically my amount is 789.87 which is consists of two products uh, sorry one product which is the chair and the other is my installation service of hundred dollars I'm gonna do save and close on this specific uh, particular transaction if I go on the left over here and if I click on the customers I will be able to see my country chairs transaction is right over here okay let's click on it and there you go 789.87 is what what is the amount to be received from this particular customer now you can see that this customer is new for for my business we are developing the relationship still for for the business but let's say you know what I did receive the payment from this customer like this okay well the the, the guy was pretty good and it paid pre pretty quick let's say on August the 15th and I received the full amount save and close matter is closed over here the balance is zero in this situation and if I look at my books over here, right, because if I in the payment, when I entered the transaction of payment, I took the money to the checking account, right? So if I go and look in my reports over here and click on the balance sheet and go and look at my checking account, it's going to show me that, yes, I have that money that just came in. I can even click on that transaction. It's going to show me country chairs is the one who has made that payment. Well, everything is good, uh, nice and fancy so far, but you know what? The customer, for whatever reason, they are not happy with with me and my service or maybe they wanted a different color we, we sent out a different color or something went wrong and they wanted a complete refund I will have to go over here and do a refund receipt in this situation because if I do a credit memo then it's going to go and link to one of the invoices but if they say uh, for now we would like to get a refund and then we'll get back to you when we are ready or whatever it is or maybe we ordered the wrong chairs and you know we didn't want this home ones we wanted the patio ones but for now give us a refund no problem I'll go to the refund receipt over here like this and I'm gonna select this customer country chairs again over here uh, at the same time you know what is important when you're doing this kind of transaction of course the date is important I'm gonna put that but more important is refund from so basically uh, from where are you gonna get the money out because you know um, you will be giving them uh, refunds of course straight away the funds are gonna go out so I'm gonna pick up my bank Probably I'm going to do an e-transfer or check, whatever it is, right? But the money is going to go out from the bank. And, um, you know, there's a check number field automatically dropping in. If I'm going to do the check number, I can let it be there. If I'm going to... Uh, do an e-transfer I can put it over here in words e-transfer payment method is not a mandatory field but still you know you can certainly put that over here for your own records that yes this is the way by which we'll be sending the money out now the the portion over here on the bottom is for the inventory because you know um, I'm gonna tell the guy that hey you know what did the chairs which you which which I sent out to you 
or the chair which I sent out to you, you're going to send it back to me. Um, and the guy agrees to that. So I'm going to put that inventory over here. Uh, by this, uh, the, the opposite impact is going to kick in over here. So if I do save and close like this, you will be able to see refund successfully issued to country chairs for this amount and click OK over here. Let's have a look what has happened to our customer. Let's go to that portion first. So I'm going to click on the customers, right? And I'm going to go to the country chairs right over here. Uh, the first thing I want to, my eyes are on, on the top right hand corner, the balances, nothing has changed over there. I can see my refund transaction is over here showing up. So um, the payment was made and I have done a refund on so and so date. Let's have a look at the neighboring uh, tab, which is products and services. And let's see what has happened with my inventory portion. So I'm going to click on over here to the second line of, uh, parallel to the item, uh, which is run report, right? And I will be able to see, or I should be able to see over here. There you go. That's my refund as well. So I had an invoice to uh, to the country chairs, which is the 1013 number over here. At that time, my inventory got deducted, but then I have the refund uh, transaction kicking in. At that time, my inventory has uh, going to be coming in, so it will be added. If I go on the left and click on the reports, right, and let's have a look at the balance sheet because I would like to find out what's going on with my bank over there. Well, I'm going to click on the checking over here and I will be able to see that, hey, you know what? Uh, we have booked a transaction of refund in uh, the portion of the bank over here. So that is also recorded. So everything is falling at its place, which I wanted and made sure that, uh, you know, it is going through all those parts. Uh, one more thing I'll confirm is go to the profit and loss over here. Here, just to keep an eye over here in the profit and loss that hey did my transaction get recorded with country chairs yes um, the sales was shown or the income was shown and thereafter the refund is also there so guys this is uh, how we uh, can record either the credit memo or the refund receipt whichever you think is your situation right if you are refunding the money straight away uh, and getting your product back in then refund receipt is the way to go and just always it's a good practice to have a look uh, in your books that the impacts wherever it should happen right they are going through correctly all right guys so hopefully you found this video helpful and if you did then please like our video and subscribe to our channel for more videos also let me know in comments what would you like to see in future videos i.e hirsch i want to see this video or hirsch can you make a video on this topic for accounting and bookkeeping quickbooks desktop quickbooks online microsoft excel canadian income tax t1 canadian income tax t2 or canadian payroll alternatively you can also visit us at fintechsolutions.ca for our courses thanks for watching